Right, we'll get underway. Thank you everyone and welcome to this meeting of the Gambling Licensing and Regulatory Committee on Monday the 17th of September. Uh, just a few housekeeping things. Toilets are at the door on the right of anyone who's used the facilities. I don't believe we have a fire drill planned either. Um, first item of business is declarations of interest. Do any councils have any additional declarations? Nope. Okay. Moving on to the minutes. And uh, apologies. Apologies, there are apologies. Um, I've got Councillor Hunter, Councillor Mercer, Councillor Hayes, Councillor Funnel, and Councillor Mason. Councillor Douglas. Do we have any? Councillor Colwick. Councillor Colwick. Councillor Pauls, do we know if she's going to give apologies? I'm sure. Right. May turn up. Um, minutes. We've got two sets of minutes. Is the committee happy for me to sign these? Yes, yes sir. Sir. Yeah. I'll sign them up later. Okay. Public participation. I don't think we have any members of the public registered to speak. Which means we move on to the first substantive item, agenda item four. Uh, termination of an application for renewal of sex establishment license in respect of Black Orchid. And I believe Leslie is going to introduce the report for us. Thank you, Chair. This is an application for the renewal of a sex establishment licence for a sex sexual entertainment venue at Black Orchid, first floor, 3 to 5 Toff Green, York. The copy of the application can be found at Annex 1 of the report. The authorised opening hours on the current licence are Monday to Sunday, 2100 hours till 0330 hours, and on York. And on your career stays from 1800 hours to 0430 hours. A sex establishment licence is valid for a period of 12 months, and the licence holder must submit an application to renew the licence before the existing licence expires if they wish to continue operating as a sexual entertainment venue. A copy of the current licence can be found at Annex 2 of the report. A premise licence is also in place for this premises issued under the Licensing Act 2003 and this can be found at Annex 3. This authority has adopted the provision of, provisions of the legislation relating to sex establishment licensing and the Council's licensing policy was adopted on the 27th of April 2017. The standard conditions for sexual entertainment venues were approved as part of that policy and can be found at Annex 4. I can confirm that the consultation has been carried out correctly. An objection has been received from North Yorkshire Police and details of their objection can be found at um, paragraph 14 and they relate to the operating hours. The police do not oppose the renewal of the licence, however they are opposed to the extension of hours for your place days, especially allowing the sex, sexual entertainment venue to begin at um, 1800 hours. The police ask the committee to adhere to the council's policy and prevent sexual entertainment taking place prior to 2100 hours. The police's objection is attached at Annex 5. A map showing the general location around the premises is attached at Annex 6. When considering the renewal application, the council does not have an unfettered discretion as to whether to refuse the application or grant the renewal. The mandatory and discretionary grounds for refusal are set out in paragraphs 19 to 21 of the report. <coughs> Within the licensing policy, the council has determined a suitable locality for sexual entertainment venues, and this is an area within the city centre and an appropriate number of sexual entertainment venues that can be provided within that locality and the maximum figure that has been set is two. Providing these premises do not or and or do not sorry, providing these premises are not near to and do not impact properties with a sensitive nature. The committee has the following options when making your decision. Option one, grant the renewal of the licence. Option two, grant the renewal of the licence with modified additional conditions imposed by the committee. Option three, refuse the application on one of the mandatory grounds or on one or more of the discretionary grounds. That's the report. 
Okay, thank you, Leslie. The point is, I probably should have gone through the, the process that we're going to follow here as well, just for clarity for members. Leslie, as she had already done, will present the report. Members will then have the opportunity to ask any questions of uh, Leslie as the licensing officer. If they were here, the police, as the objector, uh, would be invited to provide a statement. Uh, they aren't here today, so they won't be doing that. Um, and we would have had the opportunity to ask questions of them. Then the applicant would be invited to, to make a statement, uh, and the members will be able to ask questions of them as well. So we'll move we'll, we'll forward to that point. Um, then there's a, a period of five minutes for each party to sum up, should they wish, and then we'll move on to our uh, decision. And because there's no exempt information as yet, uh, the press and public won't have to leave the room. So, members, question to the licensing officer. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to know if there have been any, uh, any complaints about this establishment in the past at all, by it operates or anything like that. <laughs> we have had um, some complaints um, in the past, but nothing recently, no. Right, OK. Thank you. Councillor Pavlovich. Complaints that have been received in the past, the most recent complaint, which is about 18 months ago, related to a, a gentleman who went into the establishment on, I believe it was his stag evening, with some friends and came away spending more money than he'd expected. <laughs> Leslie, the question I wanted to ask was, uh, and, you, know, you probably already answered it in the answers you've given, was the similar question that I asked when we received the um, application for renewal at Mansion, and that was particularly with regard to uh, earlier opening hours on race days and whether <coughs> there had been any complaints or comments in relation to the fact that, that they've been opening earlier on, on race days. No, we haven't received any complaints in relation to that. Any further questions for the licensing councillors? No? Right, so moving on then, uh, we'll invite the applicant to either make a statement or receive questions from councillors. If you just want to provide a bit of context with regards to the application, <coughs> that would probably be helpful for councillors. Um, yes, absolutely. There's two. Uh, sorry. Your city council's uh, SED policy allows for two permitted uh, premises in the city. One, I believe, sat in front of the same committee a while ago. Um, I think the problem with the policy is that the SED licences that were grandfathered over against that policy didn't pick up on the fact that we have these extended trading hours. So the, the police's only comment really was um, in regards to that matter. So it only really relates to these race day special hours, which have already kind of qualified on the previous application. Um, and I'm not aware of any other objections other than that. I think if there was one with crime disorder, police would be attending today to advise the committee of that. Councillors, any questions for the applicant whilst you've got your opportunity, Councillor Reid? Yeah, have, have the police been in touch with you at all about um, this extension and how you intend to operate um, for the particular it, for the it's extension? It's not an extension, we already trade with this, uh, the hours of presence. Right. The policy was was brought into right. effect oh, okay. after our original house. The All police right. did pre advise us that they were going to object and did apologise for that. The reason why they apologised to ours is they felt they had to do this the duality of fairness because they objected to the same hours commission right. on the previous application and they right. felt that if they hadn't done it in hours, it would be unfair to the other applicant. Right. So sorry, can somebody just clarify then? They already have these hours? This is a straight video. Yes. Oh, right. I, put, yeah, I kept looking and then, right, that's fine. Okay, I was confused. Thank you. <laughs> Any further questions from members? No? Easy ride, so far. Um, oh, Councillor Taylor. 
It's not a question, it's a statement really that um, we have to look at each application on its own merits. That's okay. Thank you very much. Um, the next point is opportunity to start your case if you will. Um, entirely up to you whether you want to, to say anything following, following those questions and then the committee will obviously have a discussion and make a decision. Uh, the application stands for itself and there's, uh, there's nothing to do Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, moving on to discussion then, Councillor, so you can, you can take a seat at the back. So, Councillor Reid, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, happy to, Chair. I think I did last time. Um, and uh, I think that if, I think there's even less reason to refuse this application this time. The establishment already, if the establishment's already were operating these hours, um, whatever the policy says, um, for, for, it, it can't possibly, uh, you can't possibly backdate it. Um, and I, I, the police haven't offered any objections apart from the fact it's, it's against a policy that was adopted after this establishment um, was granted these hours, so I can see absolutely no reason for not renewing the licence as, as applied for, and I'm happy to move that. Councillor Taylor. Um, well, I disagree with Anne that if we, we could backdate it, well, we can't backdate it, but it is our policy, so we could choose to do this, but I think it would be unreasonable. I'd, I'd be happy to support that and, uh, and to second the um, proposal that Anne has made. Any further comments from councillors? Just to add my, my personal view, we had very dis similar discussion, perhaps at a more length in the, the June meeting for the renewal of the, the licence at, at the mansion upstairs. Um, my, my view now is, is unchanged and I think we've had a, a very similar process that we've been through. I think the, the police have objected um, for, on, on the statement with regard to the policy that, that we have um, then, as now, they have demonstrated no reasons why the current arrangement is, is negative or has caused any problems. Uh, it is within the policy that we have that we have discretion with regard to um, changes and deviations from that. Uh, and as, as we've already clarified, this is a, a straight renewal. So, with that said, I'm happy to support that. Councillor Richardson. Just a question when will we be looking at our policy again? Uh, covering this. Policies are kept under constant review. It was only approved in April of last year, and we usually look at reviewing things at least every three to five years. So we'll be right. doing it again within a couple of years' time. I understand part of the when, of the decision when that policy was implemented was that all of the renewals for sexual entertainment venues would come to full committee, and that was part of that policy change. Yes, that's correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. We've got a proposal, and it's been seconded for option one, mm -hmm. which on page... Page 13. 13. 13, to grant renewal of the licence as requested. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. And um, yes, just to let the applicant know that that will be received in writing within a number of working days. <laughs> three? <laughs> Two, three? Five. Five. Five or six. Five or six. Five or six. You'll get the decision days. and then you'll get your license separately. I'm supposed to tell you that, but I couldn't remember the number of days, so I'll be reversed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, that closes that agenda item. So we move on to agenda item five. Council's constitutional licensing appeals I understand Matt uh, is going to present this report for us. Let's see if this works. Yes. Thank you, Chair. At your meeting on the 21st of May uh, this year, you asked for a report uh, to come to this meeting uh, because you're the only authority in the region uh, with two routes of appeal for licence holders who are dissatisfied with an officer's decision. The law enables certain functions to be delegated to officers. These powers are set out in the Council's constitution and are typically decisions relating to day-to-day -day matters such as the grant or refusal of various licences. 
Within relevant legislation, there's provision for an applicant or a license holder who's grieved by a decision made by an officer to appeal that decision to the magistrate's court. However, the City of York Council uh, also offers the aggrieved person the right of appeal to a subcommittee of this committee. Uh, therefore, the aggrieved party has two groups of appeal. For the avoidance of doubt, uh, the importance of a right of appeal for a person aggrieved by a decision is not an issue. This report is simply enabling members to reflect again on whether it is appropriate to have two groups of appeal. In practice, appellants do often exercise both routes of appeal. Uh, there is a table in paragraph, in paragraph 9 of the report which uh, uh, details the tax advisors' appeals, which is where the appeals have come from since the last uh, meeting. Three, three appeals to the subcommittee, two of which went to the magistrate's court, although one was subsequently withdrawn. The recommendation here is that. Uh, you ask the full council to change the constitution so that there is a single appeal procedure for dealing with licensing appeals, i.e. the statutory route. And this an analysis will ensure that license holders still have the right to appeal. However, um, removing the right of appeal to the subcommittee will create a more efficient system, avoiding duplication across the wider public sector and ensuring that our approach is consistent with other authorities in the region. It also removes any risk um, of the decision or the process of, of the subcommittee being challenged perhaps through a judicial review. Um, applying the Council's risk matrix scoring, the approach to uh, the movement of the two routes reduces the risk from the yellow risk to a green risk. Um, and uh, I have to say, any further questions? Any questions? Councillor Callum Taylor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I should start by saying I think I buy the arguments for efficiency, consistency, and managing risk far more effectively. I guess uh, I, I think I would just appreciate a, a bit of background as to why we're in, in this position. Is it some sort of, um, you know, just a sort of historical evolution where we ended up having two processes sat next to each other, or is, it, or is there a bit more behind it than, than that? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it is exactly that. It's a historical reason. Um, prior to the um, appeals coming to this region, there was an environment committee that the appeals went to, um, and I think the last time we considered this, the change was that they'd no longer go to the environment committee, but would come to here instead. But it still leaves the two routes of appeal. I believe, in addition to that, before I was on this committee, um, the committee did consider whether or not to, to retain the two track uh, appeal and did decide to keep it. Is that correct, Leslie? Yeah, that's correct. As Matt's just said, we did have the new Environment Appeals Committee. And with members of this committee decided we no longer needed that committee, so any appeals could come to a subcommittee of this committee. Just, uh, Councillor Richardson. Uh, just to say that having been through both processes with various applicants uh, and appeals, I, in one sense, see the advantage of reducing it, but however, I still think. The fact that you can appeal to members from a subgroup of this committee, as well as the option of going to court, which you would have anyway, gives the the person hopefully a better feeling of justice rather than just you're going to court and that's it, let the judge sort you. By magistrate, shall I say. Um, so I still stick with the the two systems, which would the appeal is either subgroup of this committee goes. Um, they still have the option to go to. Thank you. Um, Catherine, I'll come to you next. Mm. I'll, I'll make a couple of comments um, from, from my perspective. Obviously, the, the background um, to this coming forward, I believe, is a lot of the work that we've been doing as an authority with the West Yorkshire authorities in terms of standardising the tax licensing process. And the real reason and drive behind that is obviously 
the, the, as a result of the deregulation act where we've seen a lot more out of town drivers in York and also in, in other areas, um, which has caused a number of, of different issues. Um, we've started to, to implement um, cross-border working, which has is, is, is started cross-border enforcement, which is working well uh, thus far. The real, um, uh, as chair of this committee, I've been attending meetings with other licensing chairs of the other West Yorkshire uh, authorities. And the real reason why we're so keen to, to standardise the, the licensing process and um, come more in, into line with each other is that there have in the past been examples where individuals who are seeking a taxi licence might be rejected in one authority uh, and that they might be a, a, an individual with um, no, some, some nefarious uh, objectives in, in getting a taxi licence because ultimately you've got access to some very vulnerable uh, people and you've seen that individual try and get a licence across multiple authorities um, and <coughs> sometimes they change their name but if you've got authorities with different rules then you've obviously got the risk that, that they might be accepted in one area when they would have been refused and have been refused in others. So ultimately the, 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 the driving force behind this is to in, improve the, the standards across the board and ensure that if there is someone who is trying to get a licence and perhaps we wouldn't want them to get a licence, that, that they would receive the same judgment across the board. My view is that as the only authority with uh, a member appeals panel, um, and it is, is the view of, of other authorities in, in the area that it effectively presents a, a system weakness. Um, and that's not to, to make a judgment on any of the councillors that may sit on, on a subcommittee, um, but if you've got a uh, applicant who's had their application refused, at the end of the day there will be reasons given for that and if the members decide that actually they, they want to grant the licence instead, um, Matt has spoken about some of the risks, maybe from a more, from a more individual level I'll say that there's a political risk in there as well because if that person goes on to say it's a convictions issue to, to re-offend then you know, it will be the Yorkshire Post and Radio York who are ringing up the councillors who made the decision to grant that person a licence. So I, I strongly feel, you know, given that some of the experiences that we've seen up and down the country in the last five, six years with regard to things like child sexual exploitation, that we need to absolutely nail the processes that we've got in York, standardise the, 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 the licensing process, and effectively, when we're harmonising that, we're, we're increasing the level that, that we have. Um, I, I, I feel that very strongly. So those are, those are my views. Um, can I just ask a, a question relating um, delegated um, powers um, for licensing? The other areas in, in the region, um, do they work the same um, principle of, of delegated um, authority to officers? Delegated to officers, yes. 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 Um, so basically, the processes leading up to an appeal, if you like. Are exactly the same in the regions as we we um, use here. That's how I understand it. Perhaps Leslie, who knows more about this, will be able to answer them more comprehensively. Yeah, all of the uh, other authorities from the West Yorkshire Combined Authority Group, um, officers have delegated authority, and it's that officer decision that is then appealed to magistrates' court. Lovely. Councillor Richardson. Sorry, uh, let's, let's just clarify this. It's a point about once there is uh, an appeal that we get involved, but are you saying that we're not working cross border wise for information? Well, both of you are, Leslie, about this information because this was one of the things that we needed to get out that the fact that one can go to another authority and, and apply for a license and it could be granted or not, and the same vice versa come in here. The thing is, we, whether we've got the information flowing that says that this person has applied here and has these offences, if we change this appeal system and we haven't got that process in place that says, well, actually, we have access to the background check on a person who turns up and they've 
changed their name and their spare little bits and pieces that he's not told us, or she's not told us, how will it change? It's about the process, initial process, for officers that should be working with other councils across the area to make sure that if somebody is identified, that they either notify all the licensing authorities and say, be aware, if that's not in place, then this won't make the difference about protecting anybody. Just so you're aware, um, that we, there is now, thankfully, a national database that local authorities can register to sign up to that you can put on refusals or revocations to deal with taxi drivers. Um, not every local authority has signed up to that. We are one of the authorities that are, and so are all of the West Yorkshire authorities. Um, that is only a top line level of information is in the fact it would say this applicant, this person has had their licence refused or revoked. It then gives the details of the issue, the licensing authority that's made that decision. It doesn't give any more information because of course data protection, it's not allowed to give any more information. Um, as a West Yorkshire group we have looked at regarding the sharing information side of things and we have to st stick within data protection requirements. We can't, we're restricted to the information we can share. Um, every driver applicant within a majority of the authorities across the country have to have a criminal record check as part of the application procedure. And on the application form, they have to self-disclose any mm. convictions. And if they've had an application refused, or revoke, or a licence revoke from another authority. But as I don't know if it was Matt or Sam said, you have to rely on the fact that when, when somebody's filling an application form, they're being honest. Yeah. And that's one of the things that you never know because we have had, thankfully, we're not aware of it happening in York, but some other authorities have been aware that an applicant has been refused in one area and then has changed their name when they've applied in another authority area and haven't ticked the box to say they've had an application refused or revoked. Thankfully, yeah, thankfully we've, we've not had a problem, but I remember a, a situation where we had, during the conversations with members, that uh, something came out, it was then picked up. So it's a way of actually saying, well, we can actually go in there and find out certain information. So we're protected in one sense because Members will then look at the evidence and, and question and stuff, and we did. We found out that there were certain uh, discrepancies, shall we say? But I can't see how that's going to change. If we're talking about just taking a process that says you've got two options, you can either go to members of this committee, who then will listen to the appeal and decide whether the appeal is right or wrong, or whether whether the officers done what they're supposed to do or whatever, or they go to court. That is just that little section within that. So I still go back to how is this going to change this information and protecting by taking us out and saying we'll just go to court. I suppose in, in in response to that, the reason the reason why that that, that change might might be there is that by having a dual track appeals process, you are effectively increasing the chances of overturning the original decision um, because ultimately you'll have one panel of members that may decide on it and a magistrate's court. By reducing that to a single track, not only are you standardising that process with other authorities, but you're potentially um, reducing the possibility of someone who shouldn't be granted a licence actually getting one on appeal. Um, and that's, whilst that is unlikely, and, and I have every faith in members of this committee to make the right decision if it, was, if it came to them, ultimately I, I think members, when we make this, this decision in terms of whether we should change the council's constitution or ask for council to change its constitution with regard to licensing appeals, need to assess A, the risk to the general public, if by having a dual track process we increase the possibility of someone who shouldn't be granted a license actually getting one and be perhaps the slightly more selfish 
uh, risk, of the political risk, if a, a, an incorrect decision is made. And even if um, you know, a, a correct decision is made in terms of licensing, if someone has got uh, a, some sort of conviction and the, and the licensing officer who has received their application thinks, actually, you know what, I don't think I'm going to give you a license. And as a member's panel, you correctly decide, you know, maybe they should. If they do go on to re-offend, the fingers are only going to be pointing one way from the press and the public, and I think that's something that, that members should also consider. But the primary consideration needs to be the safety and protection of, of the travelling public in, in Europe. There's some faces being pulled. If there's but it, it also works the other way. We, we need to be able to protect the taxi drivers to say that we're not taking their livelihood I, I, I agree, and that's why they would start arriving at the magistrate's court, Councillor Dave Taylor. Thank you. Um, I frankly don't buy the argument about protection of the public, uh, Chair, but I don't think there is a democratic deficit here in us removing this, um, this stage, this appeal stage. Um, if someone is refused, then they can, they can appeal, they can still take it to the state of So I don't think there is a democratic deficit, and I'm, I'm willing to go along with it. Councillor Reid, sorry. It's Am I right when I think that, in fact, because it's a twin track, if they if they go to magist if they come here and are still refused, when they go to magistrates, they're actually appealing against the officer decision and not the subcommittee decision. Yeah, right. Um, in that case, uh, I. I would um, say it is a historical thing. I've sat on taxi licensing appeals on and off for the whole time I've been a councillor. Um, they can be quite um, difficult, and I think your 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 political point with the small p clearly um, is is something that you've always got in the back of your mind, um, given the, some of the reasons for the original um, refusal. But I have to say, I always assumed that they had, I never asked the question, that they had the right of appeal to magistrates after we'd made the decision. So they were appealing against the subcommittee decision rather than appealing against the office decision. I'd never asked the question and nobody did It was always, well, they've got the right of appeal to magistrates kind of thing. And you sort of don't necessarily ask that question. Given that, I see absolutely no reason why we should keep um, our appeals process. There's, there's some other, over the years, there's some other extra appeals processes that we have removed. There used to be something called the Rent Appeals Panel, which was very interesting, but didn't actually actually do anything. Um, uh, people still didn't pay the rent, <laughs> and they'd already been to court. So, you know, uh, I think I think to double up something we don't need to. I think it really, it, it, it helps us um, in removing a layer of bureaucracy that we don't need to do, um, but also, the, it, it, as Dave said, it doesn't remove the, the, their, their right to appeal, they, they still have that democratic right to appeal against to the magistrates. And if they're not appealing against the subcommittee's decision, then why do we do it? I'm going to just put in that I'll formally move option one. Uh, um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, one statement, I think. Um, I, I'm quite concerned to hear from, um, from Leslie about we have a national na database that not all local authorities sign up to, um, and there are processes that can be circumvented, if you like, and you mentioned the various reasons. Um, in, in, in which a refusal in one area isn't necessarily then related to other areas. Um, and my understanding of, of taxi licensing applications is that there has to be some um, there has to be some identification checks done for, for, for people changing their names. So I suppose that's that's really. A question about is, is there a weakness inherent in the national system for, for, for taxi licensing? Um, but 
the sort of comment I will make in discussion is that although I do, I, I, I absolutely have sympathy with the view of justice being seen to be done as well as, uh, as done, I do feel that Councillor Taylor's point and, 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 and your point, Chair, that this isn't a, a, a democratic deficit um, in that there still is a point of appeal and that is to the magistrates for a decision that was made by the licensing officer. So I'm happy to second your, um, um, your proposal, Chair. Any further comments around the table? Happy to move to a vote then. We have a proposal. All those in favour of option one? All those against? Any abstentions? No. So that is carried. Um, that moves us on to the final item. Um, I will. Bear with me. Final item is urgent business. There's one, there's one comment that I wish to make, and I'm, I'm aware that some members may be aware that there has been an audit of taxi licensing that is going to the Audit Governance Committee on Wednesday. Um, some members obviously are unaware of that. Um, so that I, as a, uh, at the second half, I do also sit on audit and governance. Um, it, I am of the view, and I don't know what the view is of the, the rest of the committee, that the report should be seen by the Gambling and Licensing Committee. Um, and I, I, will, I don't want to preempt the, the discussion at, at audit and governance, but I wanted to, to update members on that. Um, there is a, a copy of the report available online at the moment, however, it is in redacted form. There is, the unredacted form has been circulated to members of the Audit and Governance Committee, and it is my view that that unredacted form should be shared with members of this committee at a, a, a meeting coming up at some point. Um, other than that, I have no further business. Mm -hmm. Close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you.